What's up, guys? Welcome to At Home Fitness with Coach A. I am Coach A, uh, and this is the YouTube channel that aims to bring you guys in gym quality coaching and workouts to your phones, your screens, wherever they may be, uh, to give you guys the tools you need to continue your fitness goals at home or in your garage gyms. Uh, it is the 24th week of free at-home workouts. If these have helped you, please subscribe to the YouTube page, share the workouts, spread the love, allow me to keep doing this for free, to keep getting tools out to everybody that they need, whether we end up stuck in our homes again or not. I think there's going to end up being a bit of a shift in the industry um, to people working out at home as opposed to going to gyms every day, whether that's full-time, part-time, supplementary, whatever. And I need to be able to make sure that you guys are able to receive the coaching you need and intelligently designed workouts so that we're not going crazy when we leave the gym. Same conversation I have with athletes in the gym. Uh, so it is day number 162, Monday, August 24th here in Northeastern Ohio, Cleveland. And here's what we have for today. We're going with pretty much upper body focus. You guys smashed the legs on Saturday. Hopefully did your active recovery yesterday, but you know, let's let's switch it up a little bit just in case. Uh, by the way, if you haven't done Manion yet, which was Saturday's workout, take a look at it. Give it a try if you dare. It's a pretty nasty workout, but it's pretty awesome when you're done. So two things today. We have a skill session, which is going to be six to eight minutes basically as much time as you guys need to make progression and work on this. And then we have a workout piece that is medium to long, depending on how long workouts you're used to doing. Skill session is going to be a shoulder tap, but ideally in a handstand position. Okay, so we'll go over that when I get out to the garage gym. I will also show you the scalability level of it from taking it to the as prescribed handstand position down into a plank position. Anywhere in that spectrum is where you guys can be on this. It doesn't matter to me, as long as you are trying to progress in the strength and quality of your movements. Second thing is going to be that workout, and we're looking at a 15 minute AMRAP. We have kind of an extended dumbbell complex here into a run, okay? So ideally the way I would like this to be done is dumbbell movement, dumbbell movement, dumbbell movement without setting the dumbbells down and then going out on your 200 meter run, coming back with the goal of picking the dumbbells up and rolling from there. Uh, even if that means your run is going to get slower, perfectly okay with that. If the run needs to be the rest, that's fine. Let's try and get the complex in as written. That complex is 10 bent over rows with the dumbbells, alternating arms. So it's five each side. We're not pulling them both together. I'll demonstrate that in a second. Followed by five, Strict press with the same dumbbells, keeping them in the hand. So obviously there's going to be a you know hang power clean in there. Uh, and then the third and final movement is going to be 10 push press right after those five strict press. So obviously heavy shoulders, this is going to be challenging. So 15 minutes, 10 alternating arm dumbbell bent over rows, five dumbbell strict press, and 10 dumbbell push press before that 200 meter run. See you guys in the garage. Skills, pay the bills, right? All right, so let's get into something that is kind of a high level skill uh, for a lot of people, and that is a handstand shoulder tap. So, most of you guys have probably been doing a plank hold shoulder tap where we cross the hands over to the opposite shoulder in the plank position where you're having to fight the anti rotation of the core through your abdominal muscles, uh, use your hips to stabilize, and pretty much everything from that standpoint. Okay, uh, well, a handstand shoulder tap is pretty much the same thing. The difference being usually people will tap the same shoulder so they don't have to actually cross over. One, it's quicker, it causes us to lose a little bit less stability, things like that, all right? Um, think of them as two different ends of a shoulder tap spectrum. Technically, the very far end of a shoulder tap spectrum would be on a freestanding handstand or a handstand walk, but for most of us, we're not gonna be doing that, so we're looking at these two pieces. Right? One is upright and one is flat, parallel to the floor. So that is the spectrum which you guys are going to scale or modify today. Uh, if we can't get the feet on the wall and hold a good position, even if it's a 45 degree angle, 
15 degree angle, a 75 degree angle, whatever, then we're taking it down to the plank position. Um, if you can start in the plank position, use it as a warm up and kind of work your way up a little higher with a little greater angle, then that's what I want you guys to do. So even if you're going to practice and work on those vertical 90 degree, as I'm gonna demonstrate in a second, handstand, shoulder taps, we don't necessarily need to start there. You can start your way and work up and, and kind of create work on your stability, okay? It's not necessarily the accomplishing of the shoulder tap that we're working on today, and that is the goal. It's the quality of the shoulder tap and how well you're actually able to hold that stability. Um, don't forget, you guys can always warm up the overhead position without the weight by putting yourself in a pike position, whether it's feet against the corner of the wall, uh, on a bench, on a box, something along those lines, kind of just how we would modify another body weight version of a handstand push-up. So when we do this in a handstand position, usually you're gonna face the wall, so we're gonna go up the wall like a wall climb. Basic way if possible, but when we do a handstand against the wall facing away, there's a natural overextension of the shoulders or possibly the hips if we're arching or something like that in place. So in order to not have to deal with it overarching and to be able to maintain a better vertical position, I'm going to face the wall. So I take my time, work up into position. Now in a perfect world, I'm able to keep the feet relatively close and take my hand up the top from there. If it's too hard for me to hold my stability, all I'm gonna do is take those feet out nice and wide, use the toes to grip the wall, and then that gives me a little extra hip strength to work with my core, to work with that opposite shoulder that's still on the ground to be able to maintain my position. Um, one of the overlooked things is let's make sure the wall isn't super slippery or that whatever is on or not on our feet doesn't make the wall super slippery because if you guys aren't able to grip the wall, you're not gonna be able to stabilize and hold this position. Any questions, let me know. If anybody wants to shoot me a video, ask for coaching tips, I'd be happy to give them to you guys, especially on something like this uh, that is so high of a skill. All right, so let's stick with the camera angle since we're here in the first place. Now, I'm gonna run through the, uh, obviously, 200 meter run is 200 meter run. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the scaling options, uh, distance, calories, stuff like that for cardio. I'll post it on the YouTube post, um, but it's basically just half of what it was on Saturday for the 400 meter runs in Manion. So the dumbbell complex itself is gonna be that alternating bent over row position. We go into the hinge, just as if though we're gonna do this as a lift or an RDL. From there, I row one, down, row two, down, three, etc. If we were doing this as a supported row, I might even want you to let that lat hang a little bit before engaging the shoulder back and pulling from there. That's not necessarily the case on this because we're just gonna end up in a super slouch position. So I'm gonna hold my posture. I'm gonna hold my shoulders back and down. I'm gonna row, maintain my shoulder back and down even though the other side is rowing. From there, dumbbells come up, just the arms, shoulders, five strict press. It's gonna stay up on the fifth one. And we're gonna go into the push press utilizing the hips. So again, that's 10 on the row, five on the strict press, 10 on the push press, before I take off on my run or other cardio piece. 